What's up guys, I'm back with another video and today we're going to be talking about the Steelers. The Steelers have been making some moves this week, but first before we start the video, I'm going to take this hat off because it's illegal to wear hats inside. It's illegal. Anyways, if you haven't been paying attention, the Steelers have been making some moves recently. Now, I'd say they've probably been one of the most active teams this week, the week that this video is being posted. Last week, they were that was not the case. We were pretty silent. I was like, are we going to go this whole offseason and not going to do anything and, and hope to find somebody in the draft? Because all these other teams were doing stuff and making moves and getting these good players. Like, for instance, Chargers got Khalil Mack, the Denver Broncos, they got um, Russell Wilson. All these other teams have been making moves. Now, I was a little bit bummed out at first when I seen that the Steelers weren't doing like literally anything. And I was like, oh, okay, this is a little bit sad. Um, I know we lost Joe Hayden. I think I could be wrong. Edmonds was testing free agency. So we were losing some de a decent amount of players. And I was like, oh God, here's where it starts to fall apart. But this week, actually things are starting to turn around. Now, we basically have been, at this point, we're going, we're clearly going for a new O-line, which I've been saying forever now. Like, I said it back in February for the first time on YouTube, that I think we need to actually rebuild our O-line and get a better O-line. And it seems to be the Steelers have been doing that. So they've been at least doing that. And I think the big thing that everyone's probably expecting me to talk about is the Mitchell Trubisky thing. Um, the Steelers signed Mitchell Trubisky. Now, he played for Chicago. He was drafted above Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes. That's at this point what he's most famously known for. And those two quarterbacks have been a lot more successful than him. And so he's obviously always been compared to those people. He played for Chicago. He went to the playoffs two times. He actually had a 12 win season. He was an MVP caliber. He was an MVP candidate. So, I mean, a lot of people tend to forget about that, but he was an MVP candidate at one point. Everything seemed to fall off the rails with that Chicago team. And then he ended up going to the Bills, served as a backup to Josh Allen, which may have done him good, may have done him bad. I'm not too sure. So then now for his third team he's on is the Steelers. So we signed him in free agency, which honestly, I, at first I was kind of ticked off about. I was like, well, why are we even doing this? This is just dumb. Because, like, what's his level of play? Like, is it really going to be higher than Mason Rudolph? Which Mason Rudolph seems to be like, I'm sorry. And you all have your own opinions on it. A lot of people seem to hate him. But it's just average, his play. I mean, it's it's just average. He's not good. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to be rude or anything. He's just, it's just straight up average. And Mitchell Trubisky, it's just seeming like it's just going to be average. I don't know. Clearly, the Steelers see something in him, but we signed him. I'm going to go through a couple other people that we decided to sign, and then I'm going to talk about Mitchell Trubisky at the end because that's going to be like the main part of this video. Okay, Steelers to sign former Cardinals and Vikings offensive lineman Mason Cole to a three-year deal per report. So we're clearly starting to rebuild the O-line. Um, I don't know about this uh, Mason Cole guy. I Personally, I'm sure I've seen him play. Offensive linemen are a very important position, but a lot of people don't sit there and like watch the offensive line. But I mean, this year I was definitely upset with the Steelers offensive line. It could have been better. I seen like a lot of missed blocks, especially at the end of that Chargers game. Like they just fell apart, literally. At the end of the Chargers game, like we had to go down within a couple seconds, I think, and score. And we weren't able to because, well, the O-line was not blocking and Ben kept getting sacked. Um, we sent another O-lineman, James Daniels. Apparently, he's pretty good. Uh, from what I have heard, he's apparently pretty good. He's also played for Chicago, so I'm sure him and Mitchell Trubisky have played together. Not that that matters anything. And the big one that everyone talks about is the Mitchell Trubisky. So him, honestly, when we first signed him, I was ticked off. And I, I left a couple days to think about it before actually making like a whole entire video on it. And now... You know, I thought about it and I'm like, okay, this actually isn't the worst thing ever because it's two, we're sat, we signed him for two years, $14 million. So he's getting seven mil a year, which is very cheap for a starting quarterback, which isn't bad. But th at the same time, he did have an MVP caliber season. He brought Chicago, which mind you, Chicago's never a good team. So he brought Chicago to the playoffs and which is pretty impressive. I know they lost on that 12 win season 
they lost in the uh, wild card round. I forget who it was to. I'll probably like pop that up on the screen somewhere. It might have been to Philadelphia. I could be wrong, but it might have been to Philadelphia. But they lost them. And apparently, I heard there was another time they went to the playoffs. Um, they obviously lost there too. But Chicago tends to not be the best team in the NFL. They tend to be... Uh, they, they finish towards the bottom of the pack. Let's just say that. <laughs> that rhymes. Everything I say recently has just rhymed on camera. I don't know why. I'm not intentionally rhyming. But no, what it seems like is Chicago always finishes at the bottom of the pack. So people are saying it's pretty impressive that Mitchell Trubisky was able to, you know, drag that Chicago team to the playoffs twice. Um, of course, he was really big coming out of college. So he does have some previous talent. I mean, you got to have some talent to be able to bring Chicago to the to the playoffs. I mean, you got to have some talent. So a lot of people are thinking, okay, this isn't too bad because, well, we got him on a small contract and, well, if he flops, he flops. It's only a two-year deal, $14 million. And actually, that's kind of how I am thinking of it, too. It's like, it, it, if he flops, he flops. It's only 14 mil. Like, that's really cheap for a starting quarterback. Um, as far as what we're doing for Mason, at the time we're recording this video, it doesn't it doesn't show that Mason's going to be gone or anything. So I don't think Mason's leaving. Uh, will he serve as the backup to Mitchell Trubisky? Probably. Uh, Mitchell Trubisky is probably going to be the starter. But clearly the Steelers seem to see something in him to possibly maybe turn him into a superstar or just keep him as like a game manager to get to a Super Bowl. I'm not sure. Um, I mean, the Steelers, we have a, a lot of weapons. Like we're building a team to a point to where we're going to be like the Denver Broncos, the Carolina Panthers, where you just need to get a quarterback and then you're good to go for a Super Bowl because we have a pretty good defense. And I feel like a lot of people, all they want to do is just invest into this defense. In my personal opinion, I want to like focus on the offense a little bit. And this is what I've been saying. Offensive line. I mean, we could probably get a little bit better receivers. I mean, you could probably look for that. Running back, we're good with Najee Harris. Not too bad. Um, Najee Harris behind that O-line. This is going to be insane. Because behind that offensive line, he did like, really good behind that offensive line. And this is no bash against the offensive line. I'm just saying he did good against that offensive line. He got like, he rushed like 1,200 yards, I think. So he was he did pretty good against that in that offensive line. So what people are saying is if we repair that and get better guys, like the two people that we signed, if we get better guys, then what's Najee going to run then? So we're just thinking that, okay, we can only build and get better from here. Najee Harris had a pretty good rookie season. So we're thinking about, you know, bringing Mitchell Trubisky in, maybe being a little bit better. He, I heard a thing that he was like the only quarterback to never throw a pick six. So, never threw a pick six. There you go, guys. So, we're going to the Super Bowl. I'm just kidding. But no, he never threw a pick six. Um, I'm sure, obviously, he's thrown picks. Uh, as for all quarterbacks, just some quarterbacks throw more than others. We'll just leave it at that. But... A lot of average play. My personal opinion on the whole thing, and that's what this video is all about, is bringing my personal opinion. I think that, you know what, the Steelers are a type of team to where we don't need an elite quarterback to carry the team. We don't. We have a really good defense. We have a really good running back that looks like he's going to turn into a superstar. Let's hope he can keep building off that. We have a decent receiving core. Um, I'd like to see Deontay Johnson catch the balls. I mean, I... I've seen a lot of quick slants dropped, okay? I'm just saying the quick slant thing, like the Steelers, we run the same offense. And this is what gets me mad because we run that little dump off passes, the West Coast offense. We just dump off passes, nonstop screen passes. And there was one time against the Chiefs where it was a fourth and one and the Steelers thought it'd be a good idea. Well, Matt Canna thought it'd be a good idea to pitch it back to Najee Harris. So it was a fourth and one, right? What do you do? quarterback sneak it or just run it up the middle right there's your two options you're not going to do anything else no instead we pitch it back so Najee Harris in return has to run like five yards forward rather than just going one so those are the type of plays that I don't understand that play really got me mad I did that that was where my breaking point where I, I kind of flipped out not gonna lie but I mean I just think we need to fix our play calling that's my biggest thing I think we need to fix the play calling uh, there's obviously some other guys we signed. Defense. I think we need to get the better DBs. We let Joe Hayden, I guess. He's a free agent. 
Like I said, Edmonds, I heard, is testing free agency, so he probably won't be back. As for the offense, I think the Steelers have made it very clear the quarterback that they're going for, and I've already said this on camera before, that if the Steelers got Kenny Pickett, I wouldn't be complaining. Uh, I don't know, a lot of Steelers fans are saying that they'd pick, Mo pick, pick Malik over Kenny Pickett. So, I don't know. I mean, they both are good quarterbacks. A lot of people are saying this isn't a good quarterback draft class, so maybe that's why the Steelers were like, okay, we're just going with Mitchell Trubisky. Let's hope maybe we can turn this guy around. He almost had an MVP season, so there's clearly something there that he's able to be pretty decent. So yeah, so we're, we're not that high up in the draft, so the chances that Kenny falls to us, or Malik for that, you know, it's probably gonna be pretty low. So the fact that even if we went to draft them, you can't rely on that because we finished middle of the pack. We got to the wild card round. We lost. We're not going to talk about that, but we got to the wild card round. So, I mean, we're not going to have like the greatest draft. Um, basically, if you don't already know this, which you probably should know this if you're watching this video, but if you already don't know this, like if you suck that year, you if you're like the worst team in the NFL, you get the number one draft pick. So you get the choice for the best player. But instead, we made the playoffs, so we're not going to get the choice. So it's like a lot of, I know, a lot of mock drafts had us, you know, trading up with the Chargers to get Kenny Pickett. Um, I think one had us taking Malik Wills, but that was a while back ago. Um, so no, so a lot of them had us taking a quarterback out of the draft. I think this is something that a lot of people never even expected to happen. Us drafting Mitchell Trubisky. I know, not drafting, sorry, us signing Mitchell Trubisky. I would have never expected that in honestly like that's the last thing I expected this week uh, like I said at first I was a little bit ticked off about it but when you really look at the contract details it's 7 mil a year 14 mil so you really can't be mad I mean it's not the, it's not the worst thing in the world I mean without further ado let's look at some free agents that the Steelers have signed the free agency what we've been doing and what we've been up to okay so the article I'm looking at is heavy at heavy.com I've never seen this article before, so this is basically just talking about the Pittsburgh Steelers 2022 free agency tracker. Uh, so this is basically what we've been doing so far, and this is crazy. We've been doing a lot this this week. Last week we weren't doing anything, and I was just like thinking, oh shoot, are we sitting on the sideline and not going to do anything? Watch all these other teams make plays and stuff. Like there were rumors that we had a uh, we had trades in place to possibly get Aaron Rodgers. Which, quite frankly, his I believe his real contract actually came out, and it still came out to be like something insane. So I don't really want to have to spend like a trillion dollars on a quarterback. So I don't I don't really want to take that big of a cap hit for it. So that's another reason why I'm kind of happy about this because we're not taking like the biggest cap hit. And say he does turn out to be average, pretty good for a couple seasons. Um, we can obviously resign him again, build around him, and we can actually get a pretty good team out of him. So, um, on March 15th, safety Miles Kilbrew signed to a two-year, $4 million contract with the Pittsburgh Steelers, including average annual salary of $2 million per sports track. Okay, I I've heard of this. Um, defensive tackle Montravius Adams, per ESPN's Adam Schefter, which I heard is a reliable source, Defensive lineman Montravius Adam is back with the Steelers for a two-year, $5 million contract. Adams, 26, gives the Steelers another option at nose tackle with Tyson Alalu return, returning from an ankle injury that caused him to miss most of the 2021 season. So here's Okafor. On March 14th, defensive tackle Chucks Okafor, sorry if I mispronounced that, signed a three-year deal um, 29.25 million contract, including 9.25 million signing bonus, 9.25 guaranteed, and an average annual salary of 9.75. At first glance, it's highly lucrative contract players unperformed in 2021. However, should Aquafor continue on his path, Sport Tracks notes a potential contractual out on 2023 with dead cap hit of 6.167 million. So we've re-signed Okafor. That was on March 14th. So on so our cornerback Arthur Mollett. On March 14th, cornerback Arthur Mollett signed a two-year contract with the Steelers. Financial terms have not been disclosed. 
So we did sign with Arthur Molly. He's a cornerback. Hopefully that will help us. Linebacker Marcus Allen. Linebacker Marcus Allen signed a one-year deal. $2.43 million contract with the Steelers. Linebacker Robert Spillane. I'm interested to see what we're doing with him because I do know Robert Spillane. A right of first refusal tender was placed on the linebacker Robert Spillane. Heading into the fourth season with the Pittsburgh Steelers. According to the NFL.com, it is a right of first refusal if is a situation where the team has the right to match any offer sheet signed on the uh, another team, but there's no draft compensation tied to to this tender. Splane can only sign an, with another club if the Steelers allow it. So he can only sign with somebody else if we allow it. So we can just not allow it, I'm assuming. Um, Spillane's 2.4 million for one season. He'll become a free agent in 2023. So I'm assuming right there that we do have Robert Spillane. Okay, here's the, here's the tweet right here. The Steelers have given linebacker Robert Spillane a right of first refusal tender per source. Means he'd be on the books for about 2.4 million in 22. That means 2022, 2.4 million dollars in 2022. Steelers can match any offer, but they but they don't get the compensation if they decide not to match. Okay, so I'm assuming Dwayne, I'm assuming uh, Robert Spillane is going to be playing for us this next season. Quarterback Dwayne Haskins, which is someone that we like, we don't really play. We just like anytime, especially in that Detroit game, we just played Mason Rudolph. I want to see Dwayne Haskins play a little bit. Like I want to see some Dwayne Haskins football. We haven't got to see a lot of it. He was drafted by the Washington Commanders. Um, that was back in the 2019 draft, it says right there. So he was drafted by the Washington Commanders. I believe he was 15th overall. Yep, that says it right there too. So he was 15th overall. He had a really good season in college. Only one good season. It was his last season. But I mean, that seems to be a trend with a lot of quarterbacks. They have like their last season tends to be like really good. But all right, so let's read about what's happening with Dwayne Haskins. As anticipated, the Steelers have placed an original an original round tender on the quarterback, Dwayne Haskins. Since Washington selected Haskins 15th overall in the 2019 NFL Draft, Pittsburgh would get a first round pick as compensation if another team signs him. Translation, he won't be going at anywhere. So he's staying with the Steelers. See, I like that. I like the translation right there. All these like fancy contract terms, it just makes it simpler if it's just like, translation, here's what's happening, done. So it looks like Dwayne Haskins is going to be playing for the Steelers next season. I mean, is he even going to get to get any playing time? I'm not sure. I mean, the only way I see that happening is if Mitchell Trubisky flops and if Mason Rudolph flops, and then I can see Dwayne Haskins getting to play. But I'm not sure. They may shock us. I mean, they did shock us with the Mitchell Trubisky thing. Um, we got a cornerback from the Buffalo Bills, Levi Wallace. So we really need to fix our uh, defensive back situation. So we signed him. Hopefully he's good. We signed him on a two year, $8 million deal. So I'm assuming he'll be making four mil a year. I'm assuming. And then here's the James Dan Daniels from the Chicago Bears. The Steers wisely bring over former teammate of the quarterback, Mitchell Trubisky. So I was right, they did play together from Chicago. Guard James Daniel, 24, did suffer a torn peck in week five, which sidelined him from the 2020 season, but he played in all games last and previous seasons. Center Mason Cole from the Minnesota Vikings. Center Mason Cole agreed to a three-year, $15 million contract with the Pittsburgh Steelers for an average annual salary of $5.25 million per year. And then it goes through the Mitchell Trubisky thing. On March 14th, quarterback Mitchell Trubisky agreed to a two-year deal, um, $14 million contract worth up to $27 million in incentives. So here, free agents. Here is the free agents on the market. The former Steelers are below and currently free agents. Their status will be updated as they as they re-sign with, the, with Pittsburgh or sign with a new team. So quarterbacks, Joshua Dobbs, wide receivers, we got Juju Smith-Schuster, hate to let him go, but I don't think we're re-signing him. 
James Washington, like I said, and I feel like I've said this before on camera too. I like James Washington. I think he can play. I mean, I think James Washington can play. Every time I see him in personally, I don't see anything wrong. Ray Ray McCloud, I mean, he's he's been pretty decent, but I really like James Washington out of there, so I really hope we get him. Cornerbacks, Joe Hayden, Demarcus AC. I, I've never heard of that guy. Um, Witherspoon, we also have. He's a free agent. Okay, so at the moment, guys, currently at the time of filming this, we did not re-sign Witherspoon. So Witherspoon is a free agent currently for the Steelers. Tight ends as a free agent. Eric Ebron, guards, Trey Turner, safeties, Terrell Edmonds. Like I said right there, Terrell Edmonds was testing free agency. Centers, Finney and Hassinger. Running backs, Balage, defensive tackles, um, Demarcus, Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. Is that his last name, Christmas? Okay, so, so our defensive tackles, Demarcus, Christmas. So those are all the people that are in free agency currently. Josh Dobbs, Juju, Washington, Ray Ray McLeod, Joe Hayden, Demarcus, um, Witherspoon, Eric Ebron, Trey Turner, Terrell Edmonds, BJ Finney, JC Hassiner, Kalen Balage, Demarcus Christmas. Some of those guys I've actually not heard of, so I'm assuming a lot of those guys are backups. Um, I know I've heard of Witherspoon, we got Joe Hayden. Joe Hayden's getting older. Um, I don't know who Joe Hayden's gonna sign with. That's gonna be interesting. We're losing Edmonds, so hopefully we can patch, you know, our defensive backs, hopefully. But those are the guys that are in free agency, and I don't know if they're gonna come back. Um, uh, obviously, things can change after this video gets posted, but I'm filming this video the day of it is being posted. So it is the day of it's gonna be posted. So this is at what's happening right now. But overall, uh, I hope the Steelers can, you know, fix our defense a little bit. Maybe get better defensive backs, uh, our offense, get a better O-line, which they already seem to be doing that. And that's why I've been wanting them to do for like over a month now. So they've done that. Uh, they, they seem to have their court, what they think to be their quarterback situation figure out. Um, whether it be Mason or Mitchell starting, I'm assuming it's going to be Mitchell. I mean, let's be honest. Why are you going to sign Mitchell Trubisky and be like, we're not starting you? So I'm assuming we're going to start him. And if it's like really that bad, so if like he sucks, which I don't think he will, I think right now we're going to see average play out of him. And then maybe at most we might see good play. And I, I've heard people saying that we might possibly make like a championship team around him. And it is possible, like, really. I mean, you don't need an amazing quarterback. All you can have is just an average quarterback. And then, you know, just have him game manage and you can get to the Super Bowl that way. We have we have weapons on offense. Deontay Johnson, he's good. Um, I know he just had a little bit of a ball catching issue. But, I mean, if he can fix that, uh, I know he had like zero drops, like mid-season. And then all of a sudden he started dropping balls. So he's shown improvement from the 2020 season. But hopefully he gets better from there. Uh, Chase Claypool, uh, he needs to stop dancing when we're in like situations where we need to rush and spike the ball. So if he stops that, then he's actually a really good receiver. I'm not going to lie there. James Washington, very sad to hear he's in free agency because I personally liked him. I personally thought that he was good. Uh, I know, especially with him and Mason, they have that college connection. They went to college together. So they obviously have that college connection in football. So, I mean, every time that Mason Rudolph's in, James Washington's in there catching balls for Mason Rudolph. So I assume that's what the route the Steelers were gonna go this season. Yeah, I could have recalled that I heard the Rooneys saying something that Mason Rudolph had the mobility that they were comfortable with. So, I mean, I was kind of assuming that we were just gonna roll with Mason Rudolph. Um, a lot of average play there. Uh, I don't know what's going on with the Dwayne Haskins thing. We'll just have to see how that unfolds. I mean, clearly he's going to be on the team next year, but it's just a matter of, is he even going to get a, like a lick of playing time? There's some talent there. Mason Rudolph is average. Mitchell Trubisky clearly has something there. And I'm not trashing on any of these quarterbacks. I know a lot of people don't like Mason Rudolph. I know a lot of people want to have a different option, but it's interesting to see that we signed him. And I'm interested to see who exactly is gonna get the starting job. I know they're probably gonna start off with Mitchell Trubisky, see where that goes. What is Steelers gonna do in the draft? 
not sure yet. Definitely not getting Kenny Pickett at this point. If they draft Kenny Pickett, that's just insane because now at this point, you got Joshua Dobbs, you got Dwayne Haskins, you got Mason Rudolph, you got Mitchell Trubisky, and you draft Kenny Pickett. That's going to be like five quarterbacks. They're not doing that. Um, I don't see them doing that. I highly doubt they will. But overall, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this video. This was just my opinion on the situation. I know I made a little bit of a longer video, but I decided, hey, we're going to go through all the free agents in today's video and talk about what the Steelers have been doing recently. I was a little bit upset last week because I figured, like, are we just seriously going to sit on the sidelines and let this all unfold around us? But no, it turns out that we're not. We're actually doing our own things, and, you know, we're getting a new O-line. And the way I view it, you don't need an elite quarterback to bring you to Super Bowls. You just need a game manager. And elite quarterback does help, but you just need a game manager. Jimmy Garoppolo, none against him. I mean, I've even said this to you guys before. I'm a little bit of a Niners fan. A little bit of a Niners fan. I liked it when they went on that 2020 run to the Super Bowl. So, but speaking of Super Bowl, Jimmy Garoppolo did bring them to the Super Bowl, just game managing. So that's all you really need to do. You don't need to throw the team on your back and drag them into the Super Bowl. All you need to do is just be a good game manager, and that's really all you need to do to get to the Super Bowl. And I think the Ravens proved that in the early 2000s. So I hope you all enjoyed, guys. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.